Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to be looking at dark frames and very specifically dark frames used to calibrate images that have been taken with a camera that is based on the Sony IMX571 sensor. Those cameras being the very popular ZWO 2600 series of cameras and the QHY268 range. The reason I'm doing this is I've come across various forum threads talking about the need not to use dark frames when stacking and calibrating images taken with these cameras. And this is due to the very low thermal read noise that those cameras have. So I thought, I'm intrigued, I've got my own data set, I'll try and reproduce as best as I can a flat level playing field for my tests, I've got a reasonable set of data, and I thought I'll create a video and show you the results. So before we begin, let's just recap ourselves on what a dark frame is. So a quick recap, a dark frame is basically just the random electronic thermal noise from your camera sensor. And the way we capture one of those is we take the same length of exposure as our light frames. So if we're taking 10 minute exposures, we take 10 minute darks. We want the temperature to be the same as what we've taken our light frames at. So if we've taken our light frames at minus 10, we would take our dark frames at minus 10. And if we've used an ISO of 800 or a gain of 50, we would again set those parameters the same when we take our dark frames. And when we take them, we put the, the cap on and only the noise is recorded without any signal. Those are then used in processing to subtract the sensor noise from your image. And it also gets rid of things like hot and cold pixels. And if the camera suffers from something called amp glow, it would potentially get rid of that as well. So the big question is, do we need these dark frames? with cameras based on this Sony IMX571 sensor. Let's find out, look at some examples I've done. So this first data set we're gonna look at is the Heart Nebula taken with the QHY268 mono camera. These are 10 minute exposures with the sensor cooled to minus 10 degrees and the gain of 56. And there's two sets of images. They're both being processed in PixInsight, one with dark frames, one without dark frames. The version of PixInsight I used was 1.8.9 and the parameters I used in the weighted batch pre-processing script were the same throughout all of these stacked images. The images you're about to see haven't been processed in any way whatsoever. This is literally the raw frames that have come out of the weighted batch pre-processing script. So quite a nice data set, I think you'll agree. But let's start to have a look and see what differences, if any, we can see in the background. So I'm just going to zoom into an area over here. This is the with darks being applied during calibration. And over here on the right hand side, it's without the darks. So I've just cloned the zoom so we can see the same area very quickly. And straight away, I'm struggling to see any visual difference. I can see some pixels that have changed in the background but the difference is so negligible. It's, it's really difficult to see any substantial difference between the two images. Let's just check another area, just in case that was a bit of a fluke. So we'll go down to these lovely structures down here. Again, we'll clone the zoom. And again, I'm struggling to see any difference. I'm going to say that the background here is slightly noisier, but to, uh, to a such a minor degree, it's very difficult to notice. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this on YouTube at this sort of level. We'll do one last test on the heart now before we move on to the next image. We'll go right out to the edge to basically darkness. And I will clone the zoom over again. So this is just space. And again, I am really struggling to see any significant difference between having darks calibrated and without having darks calibrated. Okay, let's close these frames down. So this next data set was taken with the ZWO 2600 color camera. Again at minus 10 degrees and again of 100. And in this stack, there was 52 light frames. So again, we've got without with darks and without darks. 
So this is the with dark section, this is the without darks. So let's do the same sort of test. Let's have a quick look into a background. Excuse my Pixel Insight skills and bringing that menu up. We'll clone the zoom. So this is with darks, this is without darks. And again, I'm struggling to see any noticeable difference. There's some very minor pixel changes I can see in the background. Again, I don't know if YouTube will be allowing you to see this at this sort of level, but it's certainly not detracting from the image. The question I'm asking myself is, does calibrating without darks make the image look less in terms of quality? And the answer is no. Does calibrating it with darks make it look better? And right now the answer is no. So obviously your mileage may differ. Certainly other cameras that don't use the IMX571 sensor will benefit from using darks. So I used to use a 071MC as ZWO, which you could see a clear difference when you calibrated with darks. Just before we go, we'll just zoom into an area of nebulosity and some background. And we'll do the same check over here. And it's pretty much the same result. I'm struggling to see any real differences between the two images. So as I mentioned earlier, I do dither my frames and that will certainly be helping with the noise reduction without applying any processing afterwards to do additional noise reduction. Um, so yeah, I think um, from my own observations, from my own data set, I would be quite happy calibrating my frames without dark frames. However, I have a dark frame library, so it adds a small amount of time onto processing. The question is, do I need to? I'd say there was very, very, very minor differences. So I'll probably continue to use dark frames, but people can get away without taking dark frames. So if you don't want to have to build those dark frame libraries, then in theory you don't have to. If you want to use them, you do. As you can see, there was very, very little difference between these. So as ever, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up. It does help promote the channel. And as ever, if you want to subscribe, I will be your friend for life. So until next time, clear skies and take care. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.